The Sixers lost Game 1 to the Knicks largely due to the 23 offensive rebounds they surrendered, and you can see the problem right away where Embiid is lurking towards Jalen Brunson to offer help to Tobias Harris in case he gets beat, and with that space, Hartenstein slips behind Embiid, and despite four Sixers being in the paint at the time the rebound goes up, Hartenstein gets off the floor quicker than all of them, and he's looking to tap this back out knowing the Sixers have collapsed too far into the paint, they can't rotate out in time, and Hart hits a three to start the game. Second offensive rebound, Joel Embiid actually does a great job of fighting with Hartenstein down here, but again, four Sixers collapse into the paint and they're kind of just wandering around aimlessly, no real intention to get the defensive rebound, goes long to Brunson, though the Sixers dodge a bullet as OG misses a three. Chicago dribble handoff action here for the Knicks, and you can see here where the Sixers' defensive game plan comes into play. Kyle Lowry is guarding Josh Hart on this play, but really they were trying to dare Hart to shoot all game, but Hart uses that space to crash the glass and get in there, as the Sixers have so much attention devoted to Hartenstein. DiVincenzo relocates away from Maxi, but again, he misses the shot. Even though it goes out off the Sixers, they escape the possession without giving up points. More Chicago action here for the Knicks. Maxi is forcing Brunson right, but that allows Brunson to put Maxi in jail behind him, forcing Embiid to step up and off his man. On the rebound, Embiid is committed to making sure Hartenstein doesn't get it, so he crashes down, but it goes long and Brunson grabs it. Second offensive rebound here, you can argue OG and Hartenstein are committing fouls jumping over the Sixers back, but it's the playoffs and it's the Knicks at home. You're just not going to get these calls. The next offensive rebound the Sixers gave up was almost completely on Tobias Harris. He gets blown by by Josh Hart on this closeout, and then when he tries to box out Hart, he just doesn't give the requisite effort that's needed. Very lazy play from Tobias, the Sixers end up not giving up points, but it's still just a really awful play. Next offensive rebound, you can see how bad initial defense leads to bad rebounding. Deuce McBride splits the top of this zone way too easily. It forces Tobias and Paul to step up and challenge a shot, and now the Sixers have no one low to rebound, though they get away with it this time. Tobias is once again the one to blame in the next play. He's supposed to pick up Hart in transition here, can't get there in time, and lets Paul switch onto him, but then very foolishly gambles, trying to reach and then contest the shot when he does not have a serious chance of affecting Hart's layup. He overhelps when he should be checking Mitch Robinson, and it leads to a dunk. On the whole, it's hard to tell how much of the Sixers' problems are just due to lazy blockouts versus not having a good defensive rebounding plan, though Nick Nurse seemed to lean toward the latter after the game. We just gotta come up with a plan for them. I gotta, we gotta look at it. And, I mean, obviously, we we talked about it a lot. You know, it's a, it's a key thing that they do. Um, and we didn't do a very good job of it tonight, right? Now I gotta go find out why and what, the pro what all the problems were. I sure, I'm sure the list is long. I'm sure there's a lot of things that isn't gonna be just, hey, just block out. Maybe, maybe it is, I could be wrong, but, but I think there's probably more than that. Nurse is right that there's more strategy involved in rebounding than people think, but some of this was just bad effort from Sixers players. Embiid was probably the best player on the floor on Saturday, but that doesn't excuse this lazy block out of Mitch Robinson. Embiid's lack of effort here is the reason Deuce McBride tees off on another three. Next offensive rebound again toes that line of are the Sixers just not trying hard enough versus is Josh Hart committing fouls all over the place, and it's probably a little bit of both, but it's the playoffs, you're not going to get this call, the Sixers need to be more intentional going after rebounds, even if they don't give up points because of this one. To the second half we go, and again we're going to see right off the jump that Embiid is just not as quick off the floor as he needs to be, Hartenstein again beats him to the high point of the ball, taps it out, another shot goes up, and Oubre needs to be more intentional about this block out, kinda lazy, kinda just half-hearted taps Hartenstein, ends up with the ball in the corner, OG one-on-one -on -one versus Tobias, and that goes about as well as you would expect it to as Tobias gets absolutely left in the dust. Next rebound starts with a defensive miscommunication up top between Lowry and Oubre, leads to Embiid needing to eye Brunson in the corner here to watch out for the drive, and gives Hartenstein a crash angle. He gets into the paint, and despite four Sixers being there, he gets off the floor first. Again, high points it. Look at how the Sixers are all flat-footed. Brunson gets it back, gets blocked as he tries to flop for a call, but gets his own offensive rebound, commits another egregious flop, gets the call on Maxi this time. Pretty rough here for Max, not much he can do about it, though the Sixers could have avoided it altogether if they had just rebounded the first time. The next rebound the Sixers gave up ultimately didn't matter. Here, Maxi commits a turnover out top, but Batum tracks down Bogdanovich for the block pretty easily. Maybe you want Buddy to box out Brunson better here, but it's kind of hard for him because he's not anticipating the shot block, and the Knicks don't score on this possession, so ultimately it's fine. 
Next rebound is another great example of how bad defense can affect rebounding. Maxi gets knocked off his spot by Brunson here. That forces Paul Reed to step up and try and force a miss. That leaves Buddy healed one-on-one -on -one down low to try and box out Mitchell Robinson, and it goes about how you would expect it to, even if Mitch Rob might have gotten away with an offensive goaltend here. More frustrating from Buddy Heald was this turnover he committed on the inbounds pass, which would lead to this Knicks possession right here. Embiid has Lowry trade off in their zone, so he goes up with Mitch Rob to guard the ball screen so Embiid can stay down low, watch him point at Lowry to run with Mitch Rob. And then, as the shot goes up from Josh Hart in the corner, the shot the Sixers want to give up, Mitch Rob walks right down the paint. Lowry is not boxing him out, Embiid is not rotating to box him out. Just lazy effort from the two, poor communication. Mitch Rob gets the board, goes up to the Bogdanovich, he misses the three again, and Lowry has a one on one box out of Josh Hart. And this is one again where you could definitely call a foul on Josh Hart. He basically pushes Lowry to get the rebound, but also it's just a physical advantage. Hart is bigger, stronger, and faster than Lowry. He can jump higher, and he gets the rebound over him and gets makes both free throws because of it. The next offensive rebound is on Kelly Oubre ultimately, who had a lot of defensive lapses throughout the game. You can see the Sixers matched up here with Lowry up on Mitch Rob to watch that ball screen, Embiid playing off Josh Hart as he had all game, Maxi on Ananobi. Kelly Oubre just needlessly rotates to OG, completely leaves Deuce McBride wide open. Kyle Lowry has to get out there. Embiid steps up, and that leaves Tobias versus Mitch Rob one on one down low in the box out, and Tobias just gets absolutely cooked by him. The Knicks ended with 20 points off their 23 offensive rebounds, completely swinging the game in their favor. Several Sixers players have to be much better. Embiid has to be quicker to jump off the floor and high point the ball against Robinson and Hartenstein. Maxi has to play better on-ball defense versus Brunson to prevent his centers from rotating over out of rebounding position. Oubre has to stop with his mental lapses, losing track of his men and forgetting to box out on defense. Tobias just has to be better because he was really bad. The lack of effort and attention to detail all culminated in the final play, where Robinson slips the ball screen, confusing Oubre and Tobias, who double Brunson when they are not supposed to. Embiid rotates and tells Tobias to peel switch, but Tobias is way too slow to recognize it. OG hits the dagger three, and the Knicks win game one because of another poor breakdown from the Sixers.